Caught in the mind fit Fuel to the fire Ain't nobody can stop it Trouble in my city But you know I'm across it Got a 40 on my hip And I'm liable to spark it Throw down these hits My click is indivisible I aim you duck I squeeze Now you invisible I'm not afraid of getting physical All these different chemicals Are fogging up my visuals Bloods in my hands Got slugs on my gunners Yo we notorious We ain't no runners Bloods on my hands Got slugs on my gunners Yo we some warriors They ain't called gunners Bloods on my hands Got slugs on my gunners Bloods on my hands, got slugs on my gunners Put on my sweat, put on my pee, put on my mat, put on my team Take out every motherfucker in between, know what I mean? Better myself, better my aim, better my breath, better my name Killing rappers on my hang, I'm running chains for the fame Never thought I would, and now I'm running You don't wanna follow me, now I'm so fucking funny Good evening, good evening, and welcome to another broadcast of Steve the Kidney Nurse. How's everyone doing? Tonight, this is going to be an awesome education show. So share this video, share this live, because if you know someone who just got an access or is about to get a internal access meaning one that's going to be um implanted in your arm this show is definitely for you because you need to know right you need to know what you need to do to keep that access working as best as you can now not all accesses is going to fit everybody and what i mean by that we got three accesses that they use in hemodialysis we got the fistula we got the graft and we got the catheter now for people who are not familiar with dialysis this is how the catheter looks right here all right you got the red which is considered the arterial and you got the blue which is the venous Okay, and this is used only for temporary measures. However, there's people that had this in for years because they had no other access to go to, okay? So let's get right into the education session. So hemodialysis vascular access. And so a lot of people hear the word hemodialysis, hemodialysis. What is hemodialysis? All I know is I see people on these dialysis machines and their blood is coming out and it's filtering.
But what exactly is hemodialysis? So what hemodialysis does, it cleans your blood through a fistula. All right. Now I want to put up a fistula picture on my on my screen. Right. So let me uh turn this around. Got my guys on TikTok watching. Uh let me turn this around so you can see the screen as well. So a fist, this is a fistula right here. All right, two, wait a minute, two ax, uh, two veins sewn together. So hemodialysis cleans your blood through a fistula, a graft, which this is a fistula. Now here's the graft. You can see this tube right here. This is the graft that's implanted. This is it's a man-made tubing that's implanted. And the fistula uses your own veins. It uses the artery and the venous. And as you can see, these arrow coming out. This is the artery, the red coming out. And when you stick the blue needle, it's going to go this way. The blood is coming back in. All right. Or catheter. Now, I showed you the catheter, but on picture, this is how a catheter looks when it's inside. And... It's, it, you see how the tip of this is right here in the chamber of the heart. You had the heart right here. I'm sorry. You had a heart right here. See my cursor, right? And then he got the catheter. So that's how that looks. All right. Let me turn you guys back around. Put you back up. All right. So if you have kidney failure, one of these will be your lifeline. If you're on dialysis or you're about to go on dialysis, you're going to have one of those lifelines. All right. You're going to either have a fistula, graft, or catheter. Normally, when everyone starts off, they have a catheter, which is the temporary access. So we can get quick access to your blood and we can start dialysis as soon as possible so however when you start dialysis the nephrologist is going to refer you okay he's going to refer you to an access surgeon now if i was you if this hasn't happened to you yet if you're in the process i would look at other access surgeons not just go with the one that the doctor sends you to because that's that's a referral i would do my research and look for other ones and google and see um their rating and how they are because you can go to someone that's been referred and he can mess up your arm he could be a butcher in fact it's it's surgeons and dialysis that we named the butcher of Bakersfield because these guys, especially when down the University of Merlin, they ain't gonna call no names, but the prison inmates, when they had to get stuff done to their grad, they send them to this one doctor we call the, the, the butcher of Bakersfield. <laughs> I mean, it ain't funny, but you know, it is what it is. But let's talk about the fistula first, okay? Now, what if you hear the word fistula? I don't have anybody on the YouTube or Facebook, but that's okay. I got to still interact as if somebody is on there. Um, you hear a lot about the fistula. What is the fistula? So a fistula, when they do the surgery, they connect your own veins. They connect the artery and the venous vein together to create one large vein. And then that one large vein should be able to support this needle. Okay. Now, a fistula directly connects an artery to a vein. The vein stretches over time, allowing needles to be put in it. Now, fistulas are the gold standard for hemodialysis. Now, what I mean by gold standard, <clears throat> meaning 
the fistula is the access of choice that they want you to get because it's using your own veins. It's natural. It's not no tubing. It's not a catheter. It's not a, a graft, which is man-made. It's your own vein. So you're going to get the best uh, optimal treatment from that access when it's dialyzed in your blood. Okay? Now, what are the advantages of a fistula? Because as I said, there are advantages and disadvantages to each access. Okay? There's no golden ticket all the way with just one access. So you got to look at both ends. And that's, I always mention that. You got to look at both sides so you can make a informative decision on what's going to work best for you. Now, what's the advantages of getting a fistula implanted in your arm? It's permanent. It's beneath the skin, lasts longest, up to 20 years. And they're not lying about that because I um, had a patient back in the early 2000s. She had her fistula, uh, she's passed away now, but she had her fistula for 37 years. 37 years, the same fistula. So don't tell me it can't be done. Now, I may have a little luck behind it because Maybe she didn't have PVD, peripheral vascular disease, or diabetes, or anything wrong with her veins, okay? Now, each case is different, and I understand that, okay? But I'm just letting you know that it's one patient that I used to treat that had a fistula for 37 years. Another benefit or advantage of having a fistula, it provides greater blood flow for better treatment. That's what I'm saying in the beginning. It's the gold standard is using your own veins. So you're going to get a better blood flow, which you're going to in turn get a better treatment. Okay. You get fewer infections and other complications. And we're going to talk about that, how you can notice and recognize if you have an infected graft or fistula, very important. Uh, that's probably one of the second uh, leading causes of death in dialysis patients is an infection. Okay. Now I'm not yelling because I'm angry. <laughs> I'm passionate, so I'm not the angry black guy. All right. So um, what else? The advantage: fewer hospitalizations. That's important because you want to stay out the hospital. You go in the hospital, you got an infection. That means you're going to lose your appetite. That means you're going to lose weight. Then when you come out the hospital, your dry weight is going to change. You're not going to have the same dry weight. Your dry weight is going to be lower than it was when you went into the hospital. So remember that. And the last advantage of having a fistula is better survival, lower risk of dying than patients with the catheter. Let me repeat that. And that's what they say. Better survival rate. Lower risk of dying than patients with a catheter. Okay. Now, what's the disadvantages? There's not many. There's not many disadvantages to having a fistula. But let's name them because they're important to note. It may not mature or develop. How many warriors has that happened to where you went to the access center and the, and the surgeon said, your veins look small, but they operated anyway to see what was going to happen. And what happened? Nothing. Can you repeat what was the lower risk? Sure, the advantages of having a fistula was it was permanent it was beneath the skin it lasts longest up to 20 years it provides greater blood flow for better treatment fewer infections and other complications fewer hospitalizations and better survival lower risk of dying than patients with the catheter now here go the disadvantages of having a fistula 
It may not mature or develop. Your veins may be small and they be telling you to squeeze the ball. And you're doing that. You're, you're doing it and they keep going back and they want to try to uh, widen the fistula or bring it up. And it's still not maturing. The next thing you know, they want to move it up here. And then over here, I see many warriors that fell victim to this travesty. Okay, multiple access when they could have, uh, you know, these surgeons know because they got the vein mapping. They can see the veins. They're not stupid. All right. Now, another disadvantage, not possible for all patients. If you got diabetes and your veins not developed and you got small veins or if you're a person of color like myself, your veins may be small down here. So you're already at a disadvantage. So if you know that before you go in, you can talk about other alternatives. You don't have to go in blindsided. So if you know that you're, if you're a person of color, you know you're already at a disadvantage because your veins are small. Now, if you know your veins are small and they want to talk about going down here, you need to say, let's try to go up here. What, what does your veins look like up here? If you're a warrior and this happened to you where they butchered you up and now your access is finally working, they, they, they taught you into getting something that you knew wasn't right or wasn't going to work and they did it anyway and it didn't work, comment in the chats for me. Give me a thumbs up. And another disadvantage is Usually you cannot use your fistula for at least, at least six to eight weeks. Six to eight weeks. Now let's talk about a grab. This is the second one. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a tubing that can, um, that's a grab, but it's something very flimsy. Similar to this, but it's very flimsy, a, a Gore-Tex graph material. All right, so a graph is a tube, usually made of plastic, that connects to an artery or vein. Now, if you on YouTube or my Facebook, you'll see the picture of the graph that I have up. Wait a minute, let me move you guys around. So this is a graph right here, this tubing. And you got it hooking up to a vein and an artery. You see the uh, artery right here that is hooking up to, that go to artery, and then that go to vein. Did you see, I hope you guys saw that. Oh, let me turn it around. Let me turn this around. Sorry, guys. Still trying to work this out so everybody can get this education. So this is the graph, this white piece right here. That's the tube and right there. That's implanted, man-made. And you see the red, that's the artery. You see one piece hooked to the artery and one piece hooked to the venous. And you see the needle right here that's stick inside the graph. Got one over here and the needle over there. And that with a graph right there. Okay, let me put the camera back. Okay. Um, so uh, allowing needles to be put in the graphs are the second best. Again, oh, you need to watch this show then. And she just got a fistula. She needs to be on here and you need to disseminate this information back to her. And if you need to have her reach out to me, hit my inbox. Seriously, you need to be on this whole show so you can see and make sure she doesn't fall victim of getting an infection or whatever. All right. Um, graphs are the second best way to get access to the bloodstream for hemodialysis. Now, it got very few advantages of the graft. It's permanent. It's beneath the skin. It may be used after two. Oh, let me take this off. It may be used after two weeks. 
uh, in some cases and may work in patients with poor veins. Now, here are the advantages, and there's it's many disadvantages. Uh, increased hospitalization because it's man-made and it's, you can get an infection. Uh, increased risk for clotting. Again, it's man-made. So that's why if you got a grab, you need to be taking a baby aspirin. All right. Uh, increased risk for serious infections. Increased risk for other complications and repair procedures does not last as long as the fistula. So if you got a graft, you're going to get at least five or six years usage and then prepare for another one. That's why I'm saying you got to know what is best for you because you want to be walking around with three or four grafts. Say you're on dialysis 15 years and a graft only lasts five years. Every five years, you're getting another graph. So that's 5, 10, 15 years. I mean, come on. Where if you had a fistula, you may not have to get as many surgeries. And so now let's talk about the last one, which is a catheter. And that's this right here. A catheter is a tube inserted in a large vein in the neck or chest to provide vascular access for hemodialysis. It can also be put in the groin area as well. When I mean growing down in your, like your private area, uh, it's a vein down there called the femoral artery, your femoral artery. Um, the tip rests in your heart. It is usually a temporary access all right, it is the third choice for getting access to the bloodstream for hemodialysis. For some patients, it is the only, it's the only choice and it will need to be used as a permanent access. Now, now check this out, check this out. And I want to tell you, I recommend a fistula uh, Yankee, but check this out. You just heard them say that for some patients, this is the only choice and it would need to be used as a permanent access. Okay. Now, if that's the case, why do you have some units who be telling patients to hurry up and get this out? Because if, now, if some patients have to have this permanently, why, if other patients that just got out the hospital and they come up to you within three weeks wanting you to get this catheter out and get a permanent access? Let me tell you why. It's not, now let me tell you, and I'm being very honest with you, it's not because they care about you, okay? They may. It's not, but it's not because they want you to take it out because you may get an infection or whatever. You know that, why they want you to get this out as soon as possible? Because as soon as you get this out, they get paid more money from CMS because they are reducing their catheter rate in the clinic. It's called catheter reduction. You may not be ready. You already traumatized from being on dialysis. It just hit you out of the blue. And now they you just had you just had surgery getting it in. Now they want you to get another surgery. You just you just trying to get used to this. And they coming up to you three deep and shit want you to get surgery. Hurry up and get this out. Come on. Every week they coming up to you. Come on now, you gotta get this out. You gotta get this out. Like begging you. They begging you because it will bring the numbers down of the number of people with catheters in the clinic. That's why. It ain't because they, you know, all buddy buddy and you know what I mean? People, they see it comes in that, that they gotta get this out of. What makes you any different? That's what I'm saying. You got to advocate for yourself and look at shows like this. Well, I want to tell you, 
Do I recommend getting this out? Yes, I do, but take your time. Keep it clean. If you're not ready, you're not ready. Don't be pressured into doing a medical procedure that you're not mentally ready for. You just got hit being on dialysis. That's a mental overload for a lot of people. That's a mental overload. Now they come in you, want you to get this out, and you come into dialysis. This could be a four fifth treatment. Brand new. A neophyte. Isn't that what they call a newbie? A neophyte. And then you in the unit, right? You're getting hooked up. Everything's been going well. You know, you, you, you've been coming there. It's your sixth treatment, right? Next thing you know, you hear somebody say, Ow! You're like, what the fuck? What's going on? Oh, they getting stuck with a needle. What? Is that what I got to go through? Is, is that what I got? And now, and now you like, that mental game is, go, is playing in your head. I got to get this. No, I don't want this. Hell no. I know patients who had this in, they was very, and I'm not recommending, I'm telling you just a story of patients and, and situations throughout my career. I met a patient that had this in for five years. She was very adamant about not getting her arm cut on. Very adamant. Exactly. Exactly, Black Sugar. Thank you. And I reached out to you. I don't know if you got my message. Um, but if you didn't, check your inbox. But, you know, so in my opinion, you, you got to get through accepting being on dialysis because they want you out so they can get paid extra. The less patients they have with catheters, the less infections. The more patients they have with catheters, the more prone that somebody's going to have an infection, especially if you got staff that don't practice infection control protocol. They don't wash their hands and they don't use hand sanitizer and they use the gloves and go from machine to machine and don't give a damn. And so that's a, a recipe for disaster. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about, uh, as I said, the catheter is the third choice for getting access to the bloodstream for hemodialysis. And like I said, for some people, it's the only way. So if it's the only choice for some people, don't let these people bully you into getting this removed if you're not ready. Okay. You got to be mentally ready to go through these steps, you know, especially if you got to get uh, access and Lord forbid the surgeon, like you got small veins and they still cut on you and your access don't develop and you got to keep going back. They want to keep doing these procedures. That's cha-ching. Each procedure, they, even if you got insurance, cha-ching, cha-ching, they, they F up your arm. There's no refund. Like you could take some clothes back to the store and get a refund. It ain't no refund when they cut your arm and it doesn't work. And now you got um, nerve damage, right? You got DASS, -D dialysis, uh, this equivalent. Wait a minute, wait a minute. No, not that one. Dialysis associated steel syndrome. Now, unfortunately for a lot of patients, they got cut on and they got had damage. If you had damage to your arm after being cut on by the surgeon, and what I mean by damage, now you got you never had numbness in the in that hand before. Now after surgery, you got numbness. 
uh, uh, tingling. You can hardly grip something. You know, it falls out your hand. Yeah, yeah, you can't bend it. Maybe your arm may be swollen like Popeye. Huh? You know what I'm talking about? Comment. So let's talk about the advantage and disadvantage. There's only one advantage of using a catheter. One advantage. It can be used immediately after placement. After they put it in, what they do, they take you down to x-ray. Let's see. And the reason why they do that, because they want to make sure they don't give you a pneumothorax. You know what I'm saying? Puncture the lung, something like that. So they check it, we send you the x-ray. Boom, it's placed okay. Go up to dialysis. See what's going on. You see us, got the mask on, we hooking it up. Boom, boom, boom. Flush, flush. Snap, snap. Connect, unsnap, hit the blood pump. All right? So let's look at all the disadvantages of using this. Higher infection rates, which can be very serious or fatal. Increased hospitalization does not last long, usually less than one year. But I mean, it, not, it doesn't last long, but what they do is exchange and put another one in, okay? Uh, may require longer treatment time. Prolonged use may lead to inadequate dialysis. That's if it's not working correctly. Uh, cannot shower without special appliances, meaning like a cover. You can buy a cover from Amazon, all right, and take a shower. But you got to be very careful, all right? A uh, high rate of clotting requiring frequent procedure. And remember, good night, good night. And remember, um, hey, what's up, Lady Coco? Peace and blessings to you, love. Um, and remember I told you guys, because of the clotting, Right here, these holes, they get clogged up. Remember I showed you guys these holes right here at the bottom of the catheter, which rest inside the heart, one of the chambers. And blood is, is clinging to it. It's a man-made device. So it's going to cling to it. And that's what caused the occlusion. So we can't get blood out sometimes. Uh, and the risk of it, and another disadvantage is the risk of destroying important veins because you're repeatedly like when it stopped working then they take one out put another one in and your veins sometimes can't hold up to that especially if you got bad veins so let me show you guys if you got a, a, a dialysis access right now i want to talk about the quick access check and what do i mean by the quick access access check This will save you time. If you got a fistula or a graft, please pay close attention to this section right here. Because a lot of them, uh, hey, the journey, uh, a lot of people may not tell you about this or, or you may not hear about it. So this is very, very important if you got uh, access, a graft or fistula, is to look, listen, and feel. Now, I highly recommend, I highly recommend if your loved one, your mom, your dad, your partner, your wife, your sister, your brother, if you're their caregiver and they got an access, just like the person that said that their sister got a fistula uh, just placed in, I highly recommend telling your sister and yourself to invest in the stethoscope off of Amazon or go to your local drugstore. It doesn't have to be no professional one, uh, you know, one that costs like 60 and $70 like the doctors have and shit. No, something about $20, $15. And the reason for this, because now you, you can use it to listen to the access. Say the access is right here, right? You can listen to see if it's working before you even go to dialysis. So now you ain't got to, you go, you wake up, you go, how many people woke up or their family member, they woke up, they went to dialysis only to find out that the access clotted. Now they got to go to access center. Now your ride went back home. You got to call them up. 
hey, baby, uh, guess what? My access clouded. I need you to come back and pick me up. And, and yeah, they made an appointment for me at the access center. We got to go there. And now you're going to the access center. But if you had a stethoscope and you listened to your arm or your loved one's arm before going out the door, as soon as you wake up, and if it's not working, now you just call a unit. Hey, the access is clouded. Y'all do what you do. All right. They call the access center. You wait for the access center to call you, tell you when your appointment is. All right. You don't need to rush out and go to the emergency room because if you go to the emergency room, like well, if you had treatment on a Friday and you listen to your access Saturday morning, Sunday morning, and it's clotted, don't go to the emergency room unless you're experiencing some issues. What I mean by experiencing issues, like you're short of breath, uh, uh, you can't breathe, rapid heart rate, something like that. But if your fistula stopped working and you had treatment on Friday, you don't need to go to the emergency room. Just call the unit Monday morning and let them know. You already had treatment Friday and you would have waited till Monday to get your next treatment. All right. If you go to the hospital for clotted access and nothing else, they're going to admit you and then everybody's going to get a piece of you. And what I mean by everybody's going to get a piece of you is going to they're going to draw your lab work in the ER and that lab work's going to show you got kidney disease. OK, we know that. Now you're going to have people from GI, neuro, endocrinology, this section this come to you. Because they want to get some of that money. They want to get some of that money. And it may not even mean nothing wrong with you, but they create a problem. <laughs> How many people go, you did that? You went to the hospital for clotted access. You know, you think you want to get in, get out of it. But you go in there, you end up staying there several more days because they say they see something. Now you're worrying about something else that wasn't a problem before. But now it's a problem because goddamn doctor created it a problem. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's crazy. Thank you for commenting. Um, Camille, God bless you. Camille says, yep, I had steel syndrome by the first surgery from number three. My nurse advocate found me another surgeon who did my last surgery. Now, let's talk about right quick, right? Before I talk about the... Um, um, the quick access check because Camille brings up a um, a good point. Uh, wait a minute. I'm just trying to find. Uh, okay, here it go. Camille brings up a good point about the still syndrome. Now, let me tell you what still syndrome is. For a lot of people who hear the doctor say, you got still syndrome or you develop these issues in your hand. I want to read to you exactly what it is and why it happens. Okay. So you can get a understanding what's going on. Cause maybe no one explained it to you. No nurse at your clinic. They just said, Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. And this or that, but they didn't get down and sit down with you and explain to you exactly what this is. Okay, yeah, and we're going to your stage three. We're going to keep it at stage three. Um, so still syndrome or also known as ischemia. Ischemia. All that is is a fancy medical word for the lack of blood flow. Like ischemia, like like somebody had a, a, a MI, myo and cardio infarction you know, ischemic, lack of blood flow, the tissues may be dying, but let's get into it. So let's talk about the causes of, of still syndrome, okay? Uh, 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 ischemia, so far as the fistula, the causes, if the anastomosis, so the anastomosis, all that is is a fancy word of the, surgical incision where they create where they did the surgery for the uh access the anastomosis okay if the anastomosis is too big it can it can deprive the rest of the limb 
of an adequate amount of blood flow. So what that means is if the anastomosis or the surgery is kind of wide, it's going to divert. It's going to divert, meaning take away blood from the other parts and use it for the access. Hey, what's going on, red patient voice? It's going to use it for the access. Okay, it says this problem may be worse in patients with vascular disease, such as diabetes. So that's why if you type 2 diabetes and, and they want to put in a, 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 a fistula, you go and get the fistula and it never develops. And then next thing you know, they got put in a graph. That's why. Okay, now, far as the graph, the cause of still syndrome, normal arterial blood supply to distal, meaning the, the furthest away, distal. Another medical uh, jargon, distal, means away from, okay? Normal arterial blood supply, distal extremity, extremity, your, your arms, hands, your feet, extremity, okay? Is shunted. What I mean by shunted is it, 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 lack, not going to, all right? Closed off through the graph. Thus depriving, okay, the distal extremity needed oxygen. So basically what's happening is shutting off blood flow to the distal extremity, your fingers and stuff, and a lack of oxygen and blood flow, which is causing your hands to be cold, numb, and those other uh, symptoms that you get. Because you, you got lack of blood flow, lack of oxygen going to your fingertips or your digits occurs most commonly in patients with poor distal circulation before creation of the AV graft. So if you already had poor uh, uh, circulation before you got the graft, then you're going to have other issues with that. So let's talk about the signs and symptoms of still syndrome that you may have experienced for the fistula. The affected limb, colder, distally. Remember I told you further away, the furthest from the limb than non-affected limbs. going to be colder, cyanotic or blue. The nail beds are going to be cyanotic or blue on affected limb. Pain in the distal extremity, fingers or toes ranging from mild to severe, usually made worse or precipitated by dialysis is the classic symptom. So how many warriors go to dialysis experience this? As soon as you get hooked up, when the blood is diverted, now you, how many warriors has a, can you go get me a hot glove? You know what I'm talking about, guys. Give me a shout out. If you ever ask the technician or nurse to go put some hot water in the glove so you could put it on your hand. We had to stop doing it because it burnt people's hands. And sometimes they do and they put a blue chucks over it and have you put your hand over the chucks. How many people know what I'm talking about with the heated glove with the water in it to help your hand? Also, signs and symptoms. You may have pale distal extremity. Now, what's the treatment for this? What's the intervention? How are we going to intervene? Okay, if you haven't this and you haven't been to this back to the surgeon to get this corrected, to get this reversed, or whatever you got to do to get this problem corrected, keep extremity warm and covered during treatment. They say you cannot use moist heat. So if you can't do that, Get yourself a heating pad, a small heating pad. Take it with you to treatment or to have your parents take it or your loved one. Have them plug it up and put your hand on the heating pad. Notify physician of symptoms or if symptoms become more severe, decrease blood flow rate, the pump speed. If you're running on a 400, tell them to increase the blood flow rate to 350. See if that helps. And then check your paws, check your distal paws, and then your feet too. All right. Now I just wanted to go over that because of Camille uh, was mentioning that she's dealing with this. 
I'm just now able to grip my hand, but still have numbness and lack of coordination. This has taken nine months to get use of my hand back. Now, how many warriors has it taken if you had like a surgery and you know the surgeon butchered you and it's taking you almost nine months like Camille to get use of your hand back? So let's talk about the quick access check, the look, listen, and feel. And remember, uh, you can get yourself a, 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 a stethoscope to help you listen from Amazon or the local CVS or maybe Walgreens. And so basically, your access also need maintenance because some access um, gets stenosis. And I want to talk about stenosis. All that means is narrowing. How many uh, warriors had to go to the access center and they had to like do a balloon in your arm to kind of open back up the flow? But they say your access, your dialysis access is the place in your body where blood is removed and returned during your dialysis treatment. It's very important. These accesses are very important. I don't care how simple this process looks, all right? You can get an infection in this access and, and get a bloodstream infection and die from it. That's how serious this is, okay? Like a car, and access can run smoothly with proper maintenance, but there's always a chance that something could go wrong along the way. Even like if you go to the access center, if they're not using proper infection control procedures, they can give you an infection. If they dirty at the access center, it doesn't have to be the uh, dialysis clinic. So check your access daily. Like I said, we recommend doing a quick access check every day. Like I was saying, the quick access check has three steps. Look, listen, feel. Remember that. Look, listen, feel. Look, listen, feel. Look, listen, feel. I, I can't ex I tell you how important this is, guys. Look. And I'm not taking anything away from any other kidney disease uh, advocate or creator but let me just tell you what distinguish my content above the rest okay what distinguish what i do above the rest of the creators if you dealing with dialysis your mother your father your sister your brother whoever you may know, or even yourself, you're not going to find anyone, anyone, bar none, going on the inner part of this disease. Like if you had treatment talking about the access, look, look, listen, and feel and how to check it and make sure and have you checking it before you leave the house to remind you so you don't go to the uh, dialysis unit. And, and you find out there's access is clouded now. You got to wait for a ride to go back home and you can check it. If no one's telling you this, so you can um, uh, live the best life you can live in spite of this disease, because you can. So let's talk about the look. Now, what I mean by look? You're going to look at your access in the morning because you know some people, they stick in the same spot, right? You could be going to dials and not even thinking about your arm and just let them do what they do. And they could be going in the same area. And next thing you know, you're looking at your arm and you see these knots and the shiny and all that. But what you're looking for on your access arm, whether you got a, a graph or a fistula, you want to see if there are any changes in skin color. All right. Any changes in skin color. Any redness. Any shiny skin. Or any worn away skin. These could be signs of an infection or an impending problem. Because if you got shiny skin, if it's real shiny, because you've been sticking there a lot or your parents and you don't know 
if you're at home, that can open up and bleed again. And let me tell you another thing that they don't advocate it for, and we got plenty of them here, okay? That's the help, the home emergency lifeline kit, okay? If you got a loved one or even yourself, you need to have one of these at home to help kit because if you bleed out at home and you frantic, at least you know you got the help nearby. You go grab the help, right? And you use your four by fours, take them out, fold them up. You ain't got to, your towel got to be all bloody and all that. You put pressure on it. You got a tourniquet inside to help. Okay, because you definitely need a tourniquet if you start bleeding again to slow the bleeding down. But you don't see any other any other providers talking about this to help so it can reduce bleeding at home if you come into an emergency situation. But again, when you look, when you do the look, listen, and feel, you want to look at your access to make sure do you see any changes in skin color? redness, shiny skin, or worn away skin. Again, that could be signs of an infection or problem. You want to listen. Again, grab yourself a stethoscope off of Amazon, okay? Uh, you, you can use a stethoscope for this step uh, if you have one. If you, But don't worry. If you don't have a stethoscope, like Steve, man, I, I can't get no stethoscope right now. My money is tight. Fine. Wherever your access is, put it up against your ear. If it's up here, put it up. You'll be able to hear it the same way, right? Put it up against your ear. All right? Simply place your ear next to your access and listen. You should hear a low pitch. When you put um, the, the um, stethoscope in your ear or you place your arm up there, what you should hear is a low pitch. A low pitch, continuous whooshing sound like whoosh, whoosh. If you got an access right now, if you're watching this live, put it up against your ear. If you got a stethoscope, place it on there and you're here. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. Okay. If what you hear though sounds more like a pounding pause, or a whistling noise, like a hot tea kettle, your access may need maintenance, right? Uh, yeah, you can wear a glove as well. Uh, again, if you hear a pounding pause or a whistling noise when you're listening to it, something like that, like a t uh, hot tea kettle, your access may need maintenance. That means it may be starting to narrow. And so that's what you're hearing and narrowing because it's forcing its way through. It's not wide open, it's closing up. So it's, it's, you're gonna hear that noise. Now feel, gently rest two fingers on your access, being careful not to remove any scabs that may have formed. If all is working well, you should feel a continuous soft vibration under the skin. Imagine you're holding your kitten. You know how a kitten feels. When the kitten purrs, you might feel a soft vibration. Your access should have a similar feeling. If you see, you hear, or feel anything strange, please call your dialysis center right away. Seriously, or your surgeon. Okay, not, not too uh, much longer. So let's talk about, oh, let's talk about uh, climbing a ladder. Okay, if you got access, right, you want to climb the ladder. And what we say, Steve, what do you mean by climbing a ladder? What I mean by that is look at your access and break it up 
to two parts, right? Now, if you got a straight, like a fistula, what I mean climbing a ladder is when you stick the needle on the arterial, you want to start at the lowest point on the arterial. Then when the venous, you want to start at the lowest point of the venous, right? So when they pour those needles on your next treatment, you want to go maybe a fourth up, move up on the arterial a little bit and move up on the venous to give the prior needles time to heal. And see, that's where we go wrong. People keep sticking in the same area, same spot, because it, they don't feel it. And if you keep doing that, it's going to weaken the vessel down there or wherever you stick in the same area. And that's where it come into problems where it doesn't heal faster. And when patients go home, it starts bleeding again. So basically, you want to rotate your sites. You stick here and here on Monday. On Wednesday, you want to move up a little bit on each one. And then on, uh, on Wednesday and then Friday, same thing. Move up a fourth on both. And then on uh next monday come back move up one more and then same until you run out and then you go back and start back at the beginning again okay now if you don't do this and you continue to stick in the same area each time eventually you're going to develop these knots called aneurysms um What problems can occur when needle sites are not rotated? Repeated puncture sites within a small area can lead to aneurysms. With fistulas, this can cause the vessel walls to weaken and stretch, causing true aneurysm. With grafts, blood can leak through a small opening in the graft material into a pocket under the skin. This type of bump is known as a pseudo or false aneurysm. You may hear people say, but it hurts less when the needles are always placed at the same spot. That may be true, but the life span, that's what you want to look at, the life span of your access can be lengthened when needle sites are rotated. Okay, let's see. Camille says, I've had corrective surgery and still have to wear a glove to stay comfortable, even at night while I sleep. Now, how many warriors had surgery on their access and have to wear a glove even while they sleep, like Camille? Now, see, this is what I'm talking about when these surgeons, they may not explain anything or it, it, it's ridiculous. That's why I do these shows. Um, let's talk about still syndrome right quick. So the term stenosis, I'm, I'm sorry, not still syndrome, stenosis, stenosis. What is a stenosis? The term stenosis, pronounced stenosis, is defined as a tightening or narrowing in the diameter of a lumen or opening. For, an ex for example, the aortic and mitral valves inside the heart can become stenosed. A stenosis can also develop inside a hemodialysis vascular access. So let's talk about, uh, let me give you an example of a stenosis, okay? Suppose you are watering your garden and accidentally step on your hose. Inside the hose, water pressure before the, inside the hose, water pressure before the obstacle, which is your foot, will be increasing while the water pressure and flow after your foot is decreasing. The same happens inside the vascular access, like your graft or fistula, uh, when a stenosis or narrowing forms within a small portion of it. Prior to the stenosis, the pressure within the access lumen will increase, while after 
the stenosis, both the flow of blood and its pressure will decrease. The problems that develop when a stenosis occur vary depending on where the stenosis is located. For example, if an access stenosis is located before the arterial needle, i.e. between one's heart and the needle that sends the blood to the dialyzer, less blood is getting to the needle. It will become harder for the blood uh, pump to pour adequate amounts of blood from the access and it will become harder to effectively clean the blood of waste. This type of stenosis, known as an inflow stenosis, is most commonly seen with new fistulas. If the stenosis is located after the needle, I'm sorry, after the venous needle that returns the blood to the body, it becomes more difficult for the blood to leave the access area and it also may take longer for needle sites to stop bleeding post-treatment. So if you've been at dialysis and you never had issues with bleeding, now all of a sudden uh, you have uh, a hard time with your venous needle stop bleeding, this could be a problem. Um, uh, this type of stenosis and outflow stenosis is more common with AV grafts. And, um, and outflow stenosis can lead to access recirculation where blood returning via the venous needle is inadvertently pulled back through the arterial needle and circulates back through the dialyzer, thereby decreasing the amount of new blood to be cleansed. Again, effectiveness of the dialysis treatment can be decreased. The change in blood flow and turbulence created within any access can cause stenosis to develop, but there are actions that can be taken to decrease your risk of a stenosis developing or going unnoticed. So check this out, guys. Avoid putting pressure on the access extremity for extended periods. Avoid sleeping on your access extremity wearing tight jewelry or carrying the strap of a heavy handbag on your access extremity every day like i said every day feel your access top to bottom for any changes the thrill buzz of vibration created by the blood flow within the access should be continuous if you notice the vibration decreasing and finding what feels more like a typical pulse beat talk with your caregiver. This may indicate a stenosis is developing. Stenosis are treated by interventional radiologists who place a wire into the vein and then balloon it, open the affected area. All right, let's see. I'm going to go over some complications and then I'm going to shut it down. Check out after this show. I think the Warriors Quest is going live uh maybe about 8 30 with jared a brown so one problem of the access is clotting or thrombosis where uh yep yep that's right lady coco uh one problem uh that happens with these accesses is clotting or thrombosis just a medical term for clot um, and what's the cause? Any of the following can cause decreased blood flow through the access. Anytime there is decreased flow, clotting of the access may occur. So hypertension, if your blood pressure drops, that can cause your access to clot. Recurrent orthostatic hypotension, decrease in blood pressure upon standing. Severe chronic hypotension, intravascular volume depletion or they pull off a lot of fluid uh significant or frequent drops in bp during the treatment that can cause your access to clot excessive or prolonged pressure on the vessel by holding the extremity in one position for extended period of time prolonged direct pressure on the vessel following needle removal 
use of constrictive clothing, bandages, clamps, or tape encircling arm, inadequate arterial blood flow, stenosis, infection, repeated infiltration of a site, compression from hemorrhaging into the tunnel of a graft, compression from a pseudoaneurysm. All right. Then you got infection. It could be a problem. I already talked about ischemia or um, still syndrome, poor blood flow, recirculation, needle infiltration, excessive bleeding. I mean, it's so much that can happen with these accesses that you definitely have to become your own advocate and not just leave it up to the technicians or the nurse to just stick the needles especially if they putting the needles in and they're not putting the gauze over the needle after they put the tape on, they just putting the tape over it. You can possibly get a infection an infection because you don't know where that tape been. That tape could have been in that pocket for a long period of time, laying on the table, getting dusty. Now I'm going to read like for instance, Dialysis access is what you should know. All right. So we already talked about that. The catheter. As I said, with these accesses, there's still a high rate of infection. And you, and you definitely got to care for them. I mean, we got germs all over our body. And we just can't see them. So imagine if you got this access in your arm, they got two holes in it, and you got bandage, and you're going every week, every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, get these needles put in. And you don't know if they're cleaning your access right or not. You know, they could just be wiping it up and down with uh, alcohol pad, and they're just wiping it like that. All they're doing is just spreading the germs back and forth. But you should be cleaning your access or your parents' access, washing it before you go to dialysis. And even when you get to dialysis, they should have a sink for you so you can wash your access with antimicrobacteria soap. Okay. So most germs get to your fistula from your clothing, from, from your touching it. I'm sorry. Excuse me. Most germs get to your fistula from you touching it with your hands. Hands are one of the germiest parts of the body. Even if they look clean, they may be hiding millions of germs. If you have to touch your fistula, wash your hands for a full 30 seconds first. It takes 30 seconds to clean all germs from your hands. Stop early and you'll leave some germs hanging around. They may sneak through the fistula into your body. And that's when you get that bloodstream infection. Uh, dialysis needles can push germs on your skin into your body. Again, dialysis needles. Dialysis needles can push germs on your skin into your body. Clean your fistula with antibacterial soap and water for 30 seconds before every treatment. How to prevent infiltration. All right, it's, it's, it's on that technician. If that technician or that nurse sticking you, you got to make sure they're going down at that 45 degree angle. And when they pop or go see the blood flashing back, advance it um clean your fish with antibacterial soap and water for 30 seconds before every treatment gently pat it dry after cleaning if you do dialysis in a clinic stop at the sink on your way to your chair to wash your clinic team should be able to help you protect your lifeline your fistula is fragile and your grab, it needs to be protected and you're the best bodyguard for this. And this is how you protect your fistula or grab. Do not allow labs, blood drawers, or IVs in your fistula arm. Always ask the clinician to use your other arm. 
Do not allow anyone to take blood pressure in your fistula arm. Ask them to use the other arm or your leg. Avoid wearing tight clothing on your fistula or graft arm. Even light pressure can cause damage. Avoid wearing jewelry covering your fistula or graft. It can squeeze your fistula or graft and cause damage. It's a good idea to wear your watches, cuffs, and bracelets on the other arm. Also, try your very best not to sleep on the arm with your fistula or graft. A clean and protective fistula or graft can help you get years of good dialysis. It's your connection to getting life-saving dialysis. Try your best to treat it like gold. That's your lifeline, guys. So you definitely want to treat it like, you know, like, again, like it's gold. Because if something happened to that, then you're going to have to get another lifeline put in. And I don't know if you've seen the one lady on TikTok. Uh, she said that she went and the doctors, she's at the Mayo Clinic in New York. And the doctors came in the room and sat down with her and told her what her options was and said that they can't do surgery on her no more. She ran out of spaces. She has a catheter that got replaced today, she said, and it's not working properly. So she said her next step was hospice. So, and she, she looks very young too. And it's unfortunate that this is happening. So with that being said, I'm gonna sign off uh my live feed of uh youtube and facebook i want to thank the journey and camille uh for coming on and commenting thank you so much uh for commenting camille please uh, if you haven't followed me on all social medias you can follow me on twitter um instagram facebook TikTok, and youtube and um probably be back on Friday at 7 and we're going to have some more great information but I hope people benefited from this if you have any questions you need to reach out to me uh, just hit my inbox um, oh let me share this about infiltration okay needle infiltration the cause improper sticking technique movement of the extremity after needle placement pushing a needle through the vessel wall movement of the needle through the vessel wall if needle not taped securely after placement premature cannulation of immature vascular access we all know the signs and symptoms burning and tenderness at insertion site immediate swelling at insertion site hardness of the area pain discoloration discomfort for several days treatment intervention once you realize you have that tell them to stop the pump cut the damn pump off because you're going to start screaming because the blood is coming in there and it's going to start swelling assess appropriate appropriateness of needle removal Ensure that bleeding is stopped. Follow unit protocol for treating infiltration and continuation of treatment. Now, let me tell you guys something. You got a fistula and that infiltrates your venous. If you still got space above that infiltration, they can stick you after the infiltration, but they don't stick you before the infiltration because it's going to make it much bigger so i think that's it so um uh, check me out this uh friday uh for another episode of steve the kidney nurse uh, i don't know what the topic discussion is going to be but it's going to be one that has value and that will impact your life so with that being said i'm going to sign off on youtube and uh facebook page and if you guys want to hop on TikTok, I'll be on that for a moment, waiting for Jared Brown to go live, and uh, we we'll go from there. So thank you guys for joining the show on YouTube and TikTok. Don't forget, follow Steve the Kidney Nurse on 
YouTube, uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Also, go to the Urban Health Outreach Media Network and follow that, our media platform for all our videos and broadcasting. Also, visit Urban Kidney Alliance for from your educational needs at www.urbankidneyalliance.org. And if you got stage one, two, three, and even four kidney disease, uh, don't forget to check out Rena Dale. Uh, get your discount by using uh, coupon code. Wait a minute. By using the coupon code Steve the Kidney Nurse, you can go to this website https bitly three reno All right. With that being said, I'm about to shut down the show on YouTube and Facebook. Thank you guys. We'll see you Friday night. Stay blessed and encouraged, and we'll see you around. Peace. Nobody can stop it. It's trouble in my city, but you know I'm across it. Got a 40 on my hip and I'm liable to spark it. Throw down these hits, my click is indivisible. I aim you duck, I squeeze, now you invisible. I'm not afraid of getting physical. All these different chemicals are fogging up my visual. Bloods on my hands, got slugs on my gunners. Yo, we notorious, we ain't no runners. Bloods on my hands, got slugs on my gunners. Yo, we some warriors, they ain't called gunners. Bloods on my hands, got slugs on my gunners. Bloods on my hands, got slugs on my gunners. Put on my sweat, put on the beat, put on the map, put on my team, take out every motherfucker in between. Know what I mean? Better myself, better my aim, better my rep, better my name. Killing rappers on my hang, I'm about to chase for the fame. Never thought I would, and now I'm about to.